everybody. My name is Brian Mosalem. You are watching Beyond the Highlights with my co-host here, Vern Crump and Jason Strayhorn. How you guys doing? Great. Doing great. We have a very special guest today, uh, a celebrity of sorts. Um, Minor. Ja ja <laughs> Jamie Edmonds from Channel 4, one of our local sp sports broadcasters, has uh, blessed us with her presence to come on our show. Jamie, how you doing today? I'm good. I'm feeling hashtag blessed today. To are be you? Here. Yeah. <laughs> good. Wonderful to have you. Um, we're all obviously a big fan of yours. We watch you on TV all the time. We're, Thank um, you. Tell us a little bit about your career or, or how you got started. And Well, um, I've been in Michigan for eight years. Um, that's not the plan. That wasn't the original plan, but I like Michigan. I like it a lot. I started my first job in Lansing. I was there for four years. You know Lansing. Oh, I yeah, think. we know a little bit. A little, a little bit. bit. And then I went to Flint, <laughs> and now I'm here in Detroit, and I've been here about three years. Good. So, um, so where did you grow up at? I'm from Pittsburgh and oh, uh, Steel Town. grew up there, the Steel Town, Steelers, big fan of them. Um, went to college at Delaware. My whole family went to Pitt, but I wanted to continue figure skating. So I went to University of Delaware, and then I went to Northwestern for broadcast journalism. Wow, and that, that's one of the best schools in the country for it, isn't it? I, yes. Isn't Brett <laughs> Although if you talk to yeah. Rob Parker, Columbia is the best. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I is argue it, with him about isn't that. Isn't Brett Musburger an alum of... Uh, Northwestern. Sure. There are a ton of Northwestern yeah, right? people that on ESPN and all over the place. Must be Mike proud. Of, Wilbur, right? yeah. yeah. And Mike Green. Right? Green. Uh, yeah, Greeny. Yeah. That's, That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Greenberg. So you must be proud of your Wildcats. You had a good football season this year. Pretty good. It did. Nothing like what I eventually assume we'll be talking about the Spartans. Nothing like that. But they're they're coming up. You know, you I just you you have a very good coach over there with the resources that Pat Fitzgerald that we played against them yes. in college. Very um, good guy. Great guy. Great coach. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of limited in their resources and sure. academic um, requirements. You right. Know. Right. He, he's done a, a remarkable job over there. He's he's a lifer there. I mean, he's a, they, they got a good one over there. They really do. The Evanston campus is great too. It's it small, but it's homey. It is beautiful. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Chicago's so, Big Ten University. It is. That's right. That's, <laughs> that's, that's right. the gateway to Chicago. <laughs> gateway to Chicago. Chicago's so, great. So you've been at oh, Channel absolutely. 4 now for eight years, you said? Three years. Three years. Eight years total in Michigan. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yep. I've been working with Bernie, who you said you've known for a while. I mean, Bernie Smilovitz. <laughs> I've been watching him since... The uh, legend. The man, the legend. Yeah. I've, I've, I mean, I've watched him since, geez, I was a little kid. Weekend yeah. at Bernie's. Yeah. All of his different... Yeah. So, what kind of guy is he? He's really funny. I, I, we get along just fine. I get his jokes. I think he's hilarious. <laughs> um, so I get his jokes. I get means. his jokes. <laughs> I, you know, I think he's funny. So we get along just fine. He's, um, he's great. That's great. Yeah. Good stuff. So um, what's your favorite sport to cover? To cover? Well, my favorite sport in general is hockey. I think because I grew up in ice rinks, I just love the sport of hockey. So I love going to Red Wings games, love traveling with them during the playoffs. Wow. So hockey's my number one. You grew up, uh, who was your hockey team? That, um, Penguins, I'm assuming? Penguins, which um, I don't talk about publicly in this town. Yeah, right. But that is where I'm from, and that would be the team from that that's area. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we Old have town, a, you know? right. Justin Abdelkader is a huge Spartan. Great guy. I, I do. Doing Every very time well. the Spartans are doing well, we talk to Justin about mm -hmm. the Spartans and Luke Glendening about the Wolverines. Yeah, always doing. He's doing very well. Great mm -hmm. guy. Very close to the program still. He's uh, been a great asset. The coach at Michigan State's great. Tommy too. Anastas. Yeah, Anastas. Tom Anastas. He's a Dearborn guy. Yeah. Great guy. Dearborn, went to, yeah. I actually grew up with his sister. We went to oh. high school together. He's from Fort Sen in the area, mm -hmm. and he, you know, we're we're high on him. I mean, we think he's going to win up there. We've giving them more resources. They're coming along. They're getting progressively better. They're coming better. along, yeah. He's great, and he's trying to involve more people in the community. He did a couple women's clinics, mm -hmm. and I went there to do a story, and I got to put all the pads on because I played high school girls hockey, so it was fun. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think, like, uh, Detroit, or Michigan specifically, is a very mature sports town. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a pro professional hockey team. We're very pro hockey, so I think sometimes... I mean, it's called Hockey Town. It is, right? yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's why I think sometimes oh, really? college exactly. hockey yeah. takes, a, takes a back seat right. to it because we're just, you know, some fans are we're, we're spoiled as well. I mean, we've had Stanley Cups and right. conference championships and so much success over the last 15 years, 97, 20 right? Plus. 20 yeah. plus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Straight it's a good to problem to have, though. It is a great problem. What position did you play? I was center. <laughs> center. Because I knew how to skate. 
See, the team was starting out at my high school, first girls team ever. I thought defense would be the hardest. You got to skate backwards. Well, I was the one that could skate, so they said, "Go get the puck when it's <laughs> you know dumped in," and so I did that. That's great. So, yeah. who was who was your favorite Red Wing player to interview that you deal Nick with? Nick Lidstrom, hundred oh, percent. Yeah. My job before this was in Flint, and the resources were not as much as I have right now. Therefore, I would shoot sometimes. Mm -hmm. So shoot and hold the mic, you know, kind of thing. That's great. And the playoffs were happening, and when the playoffs are there, there are people everywhere. The Flint right. who? Remind me, who is it? Is it AHL? Um, well, I'd come down to Detroit. Oh, you come down. I got yeah. you. Yeah, so you. I'd be by myself with the camera mm. and the microphone. And during the playoffs, time... The national time, media's here. It's like, you can't even get in. You're holding and I'm the putting camera. the camera on my head, trying to... <laughs> and it just wasn't working out. Multitasking, right? Yeah, and, you know, a lot of these guys will do their time, and then that's it. And he looked at me and said, you didn't get much, did you? I go, no, I got nothing. He goes, all right, come on, ask me some questions. So then I ended up a one-on-one -on -one with Nick Lidstrom because he's a nice person and saw that I needed help. Love him. Great leader, nice great mm -hmm. captain. Yeah. He's a great role model in this community. I mean, what did he play? 20 some years, right? Yeah, Hall of Famer now. Unbelievable. He's a great person. He had a great too. career. Mm -hmm. I remember once, um, it was a Michigan State Notre Dame game, and Kurt Gibson brought uh, Steve Eiserman up. Okay. And like in this town, you know, growing up, you know, we've had Barry Sanders, Isaiah Thomas. We had some great captains, but to me, Steve Eiserman epitomized everything what this town stood for, you know, just mm -hmm. class act, great leader. And I was in awe when Gibby brought him to a tailgate and I'm sitting there talking to Iserman because I just loved, I just, all the years, you know, you've never heard a peep, a negative peep out of him over the, over the last 20 right. some years. He's just, just Lindstrom's in that same category. Right, yeah. great leaders. And I love that usually hockey players are low key, quiet, humble, because they're Canadian, they're nice. I'm just <laughs> saying, that's, yeah, I'm just saying they're really nice. They, yeah, I mean, I mean, just I'm stereotyping because we were in college. It was the it was the running joke. The hockey players are the nicest, you know, at Michigan State. But they are. They are the most humble, so down nice. to earth, yeah. very nice. And if you look at like the Red Wings organization from the way from the top down, you know, the, from Kenny Holland, the way they scout, the way they went overseas, were the first ones to bring over some of the international players. Yeah, I mean, top down. Um, Exactly opposite of the Detroit Lions. I mean, the oh organization my. is right in first class. Do we have to discuss the Lions? We you do. Like Tell us lines? about the Detroit Lions now. Oh, my have goodness. Have you interviewed Martha Ford lately? No. So she didn't take any questions when she came out to announce those fires. She didn't. She read it, yep. And so, no, I have not talked to her. But at, at the time, I think she made the right decision, and things were going well. They had won three games in a row, and then the Packers game happens, which we all know how that ended. But you were at that game. I was. I was. <laughs> I was. I was. And you know, it's funny. I watched that last play and I compared it to our last play versus Ohio State, our last play versus Michigan. Mm -hmm. Those don't happen by accident. Those are culture issues. I mean, you know, the Lions losing on a last second Hail Mary, Michigan State winning big games on the last second. Mm -hmm. Those are just years of a culture embedded in an organization. Well, you guys are football football guys. What do you think the issue was? On Sports Final Edition, we talked about, is it Caldwell, who didn't have the right personnel out there? Is it the defense, who blew a 20-point lead? What's the issue? There's there? one constant in the last 60 years in that organization. The ownership. That's it. They've changed players. They've changed coaches. They've done it all. It's just the bottom line. They're the only ones. It has something to do with it, obviously. I mean, with Martha making those firings, the guys played, it seemed like they – played a little harder because they had, you know, their jobs are on the line. And there's a comfort level. There's something going on in that organization where guys don't go that extra mile. They don't dig deep as they need to dig when things happen like that. You're talking about a last second Hail Mary to win the game. It should have never happened. Uh, you know, whether it's the coach making the call or the players on the field just having that intestinal fortitude we talk about. Yeah, just, it's like, this is not going to happen. The culture, it's just, it just it everybody sits around waiting for something bad to happen. All the time. All the time. With the Detroit Lions. And you know what? Jim Caldwell's a good coach. He's very respected around the league. A lot of the, my former players and people that I know, they, they love him. He has a ton of respect, even internally. I mean, Sue almost stayed because of him. Jim Caldwell's very... So I, I mean, I so think... what's the issue here? I, I think, like you said, it's... One culture. constant. Culture. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, culture's a big deal. You just mm -hmm. wait for something bad to happen. It's almost like the Lions jinx. I hate to say it, but... Mm -hmm. See, I thought when she came in for her husband, made the firings, said she's going to have a national search firm, bring the people in to make the right decisions, I said, okay, Martha, I, I, I alrighty. Agree. I agree. I think she, 
first of all, she's been a, a lot more visible than mm -hmm. her husband has been. Mm -hmm. She come out, took some accountability, showed some leadership. She's brought in the right, you know, consulted in, you know. But then they go hire the, this current president who says, "I don't know anything about football, and the only this is the right. only team I can be the president for." Right. He that came out and PR said that. Move, it was a bad PR yeah. move, I yeah. thought. Yeah. And then internally, I just hear there's a lot of, you know, there's no hierarchy, no organizational chart amongst her kids, and mm -hmm. it's just scattered delegation nobody really knows what's going on I mean really it's gonna take if, for for them to really want to win is to you know have that Ernie Accorsi whoever their committee is hire a football guy well that man is very respected yes, yes. very hopefully respected he well okay so hopefully he says hired the right person but then she and the family has to say yes here are the to keys the, yeah yes. they gotta just close their eyes and get out of the way right. I mean really ultimately that's what listen the Fords are very nice people they're very loyal to I mean, they were very loyal. Almost to a fall. Almost to a right. fall. Back to, back in the Russ Thomas days and all their, mm -hmm. they're, they're very good people. Um, but I just think that when you, you know, your your record speaks for itself. I mean, it really does. What is it, one playoff win and? 57 oh, something. That's ridiculous. 50 plus. It's harder in this league to go 0 and 16 than it is 16 Sheer luck, and 0. you think, would yeah. happen It's sometime. impossible. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's impossible to go 0 and 16. Well, I mean, the 76ers won before the Clippers lost. Right? I mean, uh, the Golden State Warriors. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The, well, yeah. This is what they do. They start out 1-7. and seven. Mm -hmm. They win three or four games. Instead of getting the first pick, they end up with the 11th or 12th and get everybody, everybody's hopes up, 11th or 12th. <laughs> they'll, then they'll need a corner, a defensive end, and a tackle, and then they'll, then they'll take a tight end and put him out on a receiver uh, and say he's our new threat down the middle. Pick a tight end 10th overall, was it? Yeah. Tenth. And put yeah. him in a slot. And put and him say, in, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to get too, but like, you know, Do you, you watch, need some therapy for this line? <laughs> you know, you like, watch it because you're watching the thing and you're looking at their needs. And like I'm biased. Dark, now everybody has right. therapy. Lions Dark therapy. was Denard right. was on the board. You know, they, they passed over him to take the tight they end. They sure did. Yep. And that's I mean, like I'm emotionally divested. So I mean, I'm, it, when they completed that hail mary, I actually laughed to be honest. See, <laughs> people say that, but I don't think so. Look how worked up you're getting. I'm, I'm, you're I'm only on a TV show. Huh? Yeah, those gallows. I'm really not. Laughing, I'm honestly. I'm prevent yourself from crying. There's one team, <laughs> one program that I'm invested in, and they're in East Lansing, really. And I mean, you know, this is a great football town. If the Lions ever won, you know, there would be a ton. Well, it proves that it is because they don't have the best record. People still go to those games, pack Ford Field. Great fans, great fans. Yep. They do, and they they're dying and thirsting for a winner. And we're lucky. I mean, we have four four sports teams. Yeah, yeah. great so, sports. So, so hockey is your favorite sport. But Correct. Is it also your favorite sport to cover? I like covering all of it. I really do. I love traveling. I love going to everything. So I guess I'll say yes because it's my favorite sport, but I literally love going to all kinds of sports. Outside of Pittsburgh and Detroit, what are your favorite sports towns to go to? Chicago's a good one, even though Top it's a rival. Three. I know. No, it's a good it's a Top great, three. I agree. Philadelphia, even though the fans oh, are tough, a little. Man, tough, but man. it's yeah. fun, though. It is They fun. make it fun in Philadelphia. Um, I was in Dallas with the Lions. Oh, um, yeah. That seemed fun, although not as Die hard as the other cities I said. I think Dallas has become more national. You know, America's team. I mean, every town they go to, they're they have a following. Regardless There's of fans record. everywhere. Right. You know, everybody loves the Cowboys. And of course, Pittsburgh. Did we talk? I about said that? outside of Pittsburgh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is of, a great town. Though. Pittsburgh's a great football town. I think it's a great sports town. It is. Mm -hmm. so you're missing what basketball? Yes, we don't have NBA. Yeah, I wonder why. They've tried, you know, minor league sort of things, and no one goes. So. For Manny Brothers. It's a great sandwich. Yeah, for Manny Brothers. Want to talk about our top sandwich? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> South Side. Where do we go? South Side across the bridge? Yeah. South Side on um, Carson Street. There's yeah. all those bars and stuff. Yeah, yeah. we went. Uh, so um, Pat Narduzzi, Michigan State's old defensive coordinator, took over your parents' alma mater, University of Pitt. Yep. Mm -hmm. What kind of reviews are we getting about him back over there? They love him in Pittsburgh. My dad calls me all the time to talk to him because my dad goes to all the pick games. And when I was at the Big Ten Championship game, he texted me, my dad, and said, what do you think Pat Narduzzi thinks of the success now mm. at Michigan State? Because they're finally getting to that national level. And you said very happy. he's very happy. Very. Like he actually that. helped them game plan against Iowa. Yeah, he did. Sent really? them a lot of the film. Yeah, they had played. Tendencies. They played them. That's Lost so for the last nice. second field goal. Very close. I didn't know that. That's oh, yeah. nice. Very close to Coach D. Very close to the program. He'll text us all the time. Congratulations. There's a big win. You know, you don't, you spent eight years, how long was he at Michigan State? 
Um, yeah, eight years. You spent eight years there, you know, that's, your kids grew up there, it's part of your life, and you kind of right. take what you learn from Coach D and some of the other coaches, and then you maybe change some of the things that you want and, and go over to, to Pitt. And he knew, he knew that that job, that's a great job. There's great tradition, you can win there. Mm -hmm. um, His personality just fits, though. It does. It he's he's a Youngstown boy. Yeah. Yeah. And they love him there. They, they really him. do. And he's turned it around there very quickly with not his players. Right? Yeah, Until he, he was. He ran a fake punt. I forgot what game that was against Syracuse. He ran a fake punt at the end of the game. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then he kicked the field goal to win it, you know, well, and Syracuse I texted homecoming. him. Homecoming. Yeah, that was and, a big and, win. And he yeah. said, got to do it. That's how yeah. we got to win right now. You know, but when he gets his players, he's going to win there. Oh, well, I think so. Also, it's the ACC. Yeah, the it's conference. It's not the competition that the Big Ten is. Definitely not the Big Ten. It's definitely Clemson, not. Clemson, you got Florida State. They're on the other side, though, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. You could argue right now the Big Ten is the toughest conference in the country. Oh, without question. Yeah. Right? You yes. got five teams in the top 15. Ohio, last year, the bowl games instantly flipped that perception. Oh. Ohio State winning it all. Michigan State beating Baylor. Wisconsin beating Auburn. Changed the whole perception. Yes, we do have speed and talent in the Big Ten, right? The one thing, though, that uh, the University of Pittsburgh is going through is the court, the running back, Connor. Oh, yeah. You hear the news of him having uh, the Hodgkin's lymphoma. Did you oh, see actually, that? actually, no, I didn't. Uh, yeah, the All-American yeah, All tailback who uh, was injured early in the season uh, with an ACL was out, and the doctors caught this. And, uh, wow. Yeah, just real sad news. But it looks like he will be able It's treatable. And he may be able to return, but yeah, that was just real. I know, I saw that. And you see the, the Pitt community really rallied around him. Wow. Yeah. It's a good community, really yeah. good community. Yeah. So, who has been the most difficult person oh, man. <laughs> to interview <laughs> over the years? I, that, I plead the fifth on that. <laughs> he or she may or may not still be in town. I can't. I yeah. <laughs> you know? So, um, what's been so far? Give us some of your, your greatest experiences. What, in the some, three years since I've been Yeah, here. some of the great, have you witnessed any great wins, maybe besides Saturday? Well, <laughs> well, I want to talk about Michigan State in a minute, but I'll give you my most favorite times. One was definitely the Winter Classic at the Big House. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got to skate on that ice. I got to skate on the ice at um, Comerica Park. Oh, yeah. And for someone who likes hockey and skates, yeah. that was kind of a big deal for <laughs> me. I cool. really liked yeah. it. And I did, my favorite story at Channel 4 so far has been teaching Bernie how to skate, which was a feature piece, <laughs> oh, which was hilarious. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I will text you all the link. Please. Um, it was hilarious. He would not let go of the goalie or um, the goal post, and he was pushing it around. <laughs> that was my favorite story. Yeah. I yeah. see this. Yeah. Four-year-old. Four <laughs> yeah. I don't that's know how to ice skate. That's how they learn how to skate. I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm feeling another feature piece coming. I'll teach you guys how to skate. Oh, wow. Take him. Yeah. Gotta get some big skates. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've got yeah, I'm just coming out for that Achilles tear, so I don't think I'm ready. You <laughs> stay on the, yeah, you can be you on can the be bench. Five, yeah. take, him. take five in the <laughs> penalty box. <laughs> take him and throw some pillows on the ice. Just in case you fall. Just in case you fall. In case? Yeah. I'm guarantee. I'm trying to think now. I'll come back to it if I think of something that was just so amazing. I, I love sports, which is why I do this. Everything that I go out and cover, I love high school football. You know, when there's a great play oh, and you yeah. get pumped, I just like sports. So that's why I do it. But I want to bring you up. Okay. The radio call when Michigan State beat Michigan. Can we play it? Can we play it? Oh, yeah, let's my play that. goodness. I ran that on TV at least two, three Did times. Did you? It was so great. You were freaking out. That's what he does. I know. I mean, hey. You when know. he sounded like Cookie Monster? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's what I heard. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. what it was. It was one of those unbelievable moments right there. You know, I'm looking at the, you know, the, the time that was left, and they were lining up in the, in the punt formation. I'm thinking, Connor's going to have maybe two or three seconds left to do some kind of a Hail Mary, hook and ladder type of play. And then you see the, the bobbled snap. And, well, you know, there was a lot of things setting up when I, I saw the free receiver from uh, the Michigan side, the gunner. He was uncovered. I thought, man, the punter's going to catch the ball and just throw it to him. And the guy could just walk basically, in. Yeah, walk in. And he bobbles that snap, and the ball goes in the air. It, I mean, it was an unbelievable moment. I was thinking I was, I was dreaming. I was going to say, well, did you know you were looking at? <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Yeah, like, yeah, everything it was, was hard right. to process it, just like Dan Diedorf said. I can't process what I just saw, you know? <laughs> 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 you know, but 
it was just great. And uh, so we're going nuts in that in that booth and that's made you know I, that's what like makes that. I loved it. But that's what makes <laughs> it so <laughs> just the raw emotion, you know. Yeah. yeah. He's had some of the great calls because it's real. The emotion involved. I Everywhere loved it. we go, people always reference his calls. His Rose Bowl call, his uh, at Michigan call. Oh yeah. You know. He stuffed them. He yeah. stuffed them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was. I mean, it was. A, um, it's been just one of those years. You know, it's been. I also was asking you guys before we started about Nick Saban played for him. Yes. What do you think of him now that they're going to take on Alabama and can they beat him? Mm. Oh, we can beat him. We can definitely beat him. We can beat him. We're, we're, we owe him. We do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're built, we're built now to probably handle anybody physically in the country. We can beat them. There's well, no, we so probably what? match up better against them right now than say a Clemson or an Oklahoma that just will spread us around and, right. and throw the ball over the, the place. Michigan State secondary is still a little young. Thick. Yeah, young. we had a couple injuries. You know, along, they're coming yeah. along. Yeah. What we'll do you guys think the X factor is in the game? For which game? Uh, Alabama. Oh yeah. Oh, the trenches. I think. Yeah, man, it's going to be up front. You know, I think Michigan State's defensive D line. line against that that O line and, and vice versa yeah. because they have a really good front four, front seven at Alabama, and so do we. So right. it's really going to match up with that. Derrick Henry is their horse, their running back. They're probably going to win the Heisman. I think he's going to run away with it, um, you know. But he's a big back. The big backs take a little while to get going. They're not. We have more trouble with guys who are shifty, um, which Kanziri from Iowa was, but he, he went out right away. Mm -hmm. That really hurt Iowa, I think, uh, in their chances to beat us because of the kind of dynamic he brings to the offense. But Derrick Henry, he's a guy. If Michigan State defensive line can play in that backfield when he gets the ball. I think it's going to be a long day for yeah. him, man. I mean, 45 carries isn't going to cut it to beat Michigan State. You're going to have to have Coker beat our secondary. I don't know if they can really do that. Yeah. What about the, um, the the seniors? Uh, we have a solid group of uh, seniors with a lot of experience. Winning us so. team, right? Great leadership. Yeah, yeah, 43 oh, yeah. wins. I think that's going to be a factor uh, Just beat well. the last two classes who had 42 wins each. I mean, it's unbelievable, this this class. You look at, I mean, top to bottom. Connor Cook and Shalit Calhoun, the two biggest recruits, Coach D'Antonio says, for this class mm. because they came back for their senior season. And all they do is win, man. I mean, that's the name of that song they like. I was just what, right? Right. Remember when they split that song and Coach D put his arms up? Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you, at halftime of that last game, like you just saw it in their face, you know, they they weren't losing. I mean, they they were very, we're good, we're okay, you know, we're going to get them. And Shalik called everybody up at halftime and told everybody that um, this is on us. You know, we're going to win this game. We, didn't, we haven't been working since February for this. So they have tremendous leadership. You know, they got this, you know, <coughs> a lot of old, older veteran guys mm -hmm. that know how to win. And we're, um, I, the game's going to be one in the trenches, exactly like you said. Nobody's ran on us in five years. Right. No. Nobody's yeah. ran the football. Especially Nobody. big games. You know, there's been big uh, runs with Purdue and yeah, big you know, runs but on a consistent, like you know, but like a big game when these guys are all juiced up. You yeah. know, they, no, they, nobody's they ran the ball runs. and controlled the clock on us. They might have popped a big play here or there, yeah. but since since I can remember, probably 2011, 2012, even right. Nobody's ran consistently on us, so I don't. You I don't, have yeah. to be able to run the ball. I mean, Baylor couldn't. No, they couldn't. Baylor couldn't put That's us out last lost. year because they couldn't run the ball. They were right. up by 20 and they couldn't take the air out of the clock, so. But they're a great team, so. But back to yeah. Saban. Um, Nick's been great to me. Nick's, I, I personally. His public persona is, uh, you know, not that great. But you're saying he's a great person. He was he, very. You know, he, he's been good to his former players. He's, he he's a good guy. You know him a little bit more intimately in the, in the past years than some of us older players do. But, you know, when he was around at Michigan State, it, it was two totally different styles from what you see Coach Antonio, how he runs his team and the way his players play for him versus Saban. And it, it's not a secret. Saban's a brash guy. Uh, he's very uh, bombastic. He likes to yell and scream and rule with the iron fist, whereas Coach D'Antonio is a very fatherly-like figure, a guy who you trust uh, everything <clears throat> that he says, and you know that he'll do anything for you. Two different styles. Yeah, and Nick will walk into a, a recruit's house and tell him, you know, you're going to play 20 plays because we've got to get you ready for the NFL. There's going to be six of you. And this is what we're doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. but but he just has a different style. He does care, but he's very robotic too. I mean, at his daughter's wedding, he got up there to do the toast, 
And you would have thought he's at a press conference because his <laughs> demeanor was the exact same way with his hands about giving away his daughter as he's talking about the, the other team's defense. You know what I mean? And I'm looking at him I'm like, Coach, it's your, it's, it's, your, you know, it's your daughter's wedding. Yeah. What are you doing? You know, so they are. Jason's exactly right. They're very different people. Coach D's a lot more nurturing. He's grown up more under the trestle. You know, mm -hmm. care about your players, you know. So, but Nick's got a lot of Michigan State guys down there. Yeah. Still loves Michigan State. Keeps in touch with a lot of MSU folks. Um, he, he, trust me, I don't really think he wants to play Michigan State just from the simple fact that yeah. he's close to so many people. Sure. Right. Well, you they know? ended the uh, They home ended and home that home and home because he just, he doesn't want to beat Michigan State. He really didn't want to play against them. Right. For, for personal reasons more than anything. It wasn't, you know, but I, I like him. Makes really for do. good storylines for us. Oh, it's I mean, a geez, lot of that's why they they put us at the they took us out of South Beach and I know put they us put us in <laughs> Dallas, you know. But back to Dallas, back to Cotton Bowl. We back knew. I mean, we Cotton I just we just knew that was we were hearing rumblings that um, um, that Nick didn't want <laughs> Oklahoma so close to home mm -hmm. for Dallas, so they flipped them in the four spot. I mean, who knows? Doesn't matter. Who knows? It is what it is. Game. It is what Let's it is. do but this. You know, the road to the national title has to go through Tuscaloosa. It just does. You can't avoid Alabama and win a national title. So, I think it makes for a great story. Coming back from the uh, Citrus Bowl or the Capital One Bowl, 2011, that team that Alabama had against Michigan State that was a stacked team, top yeah. to bottom. I mean, how many first round? How, how many guys on that Seven team? Seven or eight were first round. I think. Yeah. yeah, Julio Jones. Was that 2010 or 11? It was a 10 yeah, team 11, 11 yeah. game. So it was on January 1st, 2011. So four years later, five years later. Yeah, it's like Rocky, man. We're going to see how we measure up, yeah. as Coach D says, <laughs> on the program. You know, Michigan oh, yeah. State, the football team, when you walk by them, they pass the eyeball test. You know, when they're oh, walking yeah. by you on the field, you're looking at them and you're saying, oh, this is as <laughs> big and as physical as we have ever looked, ever been. Yeah, you saw that. Back then, not so much. We were there, but... You saw the Alabama players, and it was a difference. Mm -hmm. And then 12, 13, you started seeing the, the eyeball test that you're talking about with Michigan State. Players are very impressive physically, and then you see how they perform on the field. The, the, you know, the, the way he's winning, they said you couldn't win this way, you know, um, with, with um, just clean, highest grade point ever. A lot of, you know, a high lot character. of things, high character, a lot of things that he's doing up there, they said it was hard to win that way up there. Mm -hmm. Speaking of college football, have you interviewed – Jim Harbaugh. No, not one-on-one, -on -one, just mm. sort of press conference. What is your impression of him? Um, First I, of all, we, we think he's a fantastic coach. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. He says some oddball things sometimes in these <laughs> press conferences, and we're all like, what are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> My favorite part is when he feels a little uncomfortable or something, he'll just, how you doing? Nice to see you all. And we're all like, Great, nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> but man, did he turn that team around with Brady Hoax people? Great he coach. Did. Yeah. yeah, he's a so, great coach. He's a great coach, and I um, covered Chad Carr a little bit, and oh, the way yeah. he handled that yeah. situation, phenomenal. I thought was phenomenal. Absolutely. So they got a good thing going over there in Ann Arbor. They, as well. You know, our folks handled that very well too. Ohio State's folks did. Yes. You know, um, that was a tough. It's funny. I called him. We went in Columbus. We're driving home. We're excited. That Monday, Chad Carr passes. So I call him. I say, "We're you know we're worried about a game, right? Yeah. You know, there's bigger things in bigger life. Bigger things in life. It puts it in perspective, you know. Yes, puts and that family to share that story with Unbelievable. all of us. Unbelievable. Yes. I yeah. had to turn that ESPN piece off. I couldn't oh, watch it. It's a great it was, piece. Yeah, yeah really I great. You have kids. I have you know we have little kids. I mean, yeah. geez, I couldn't. I mean, I just couldn't watch Can't it. Imagine Definitely that. thoughts with the Carr family. I haven't yes. talked no, to them. Sure. Lloyd's a great man. Lloyd's from yes. the area. And mm -hmm. Lloyd's uh, very supportive. Isn't Lloyd helping out with an Ypsilanti school or something? He might be. I mean, he's from Down River. He's probably doing something with Ypsilanti school. I thought that there was an announcement of some sort. Maybe I'm wrong. He, um, he was on George Perlis's Motor City Bowl uh, committee uh, when mm -hmm. he had, when George owned the Motor City Bowl. He's, Lloyd Carr is a great person. Yes. He's a great person. Yeah. He's very compassionate. And, you know, that's unfortunate when... It does. It puts a game in perspective when that happens. Definitely. You know, you, you start wondering well, where are our priorities. You know, what are we, what are we happy? What, what's really important? Right. In life. So Absolutely. It's um, it's uh, it was interesting, and and I like I, I thought the way our folks handled it in Ohio State handled it was. Uh, with the stickers on the helmets for Ohio State. And then the thing we did with our band, you know, we Chad Tough and stuff like that, yeah. and our AD was very sympathetic to that. Um, 
It was good. It was it was it was, it was a nice tribute, you know. So I agree. So um, well, Jamie, thank you. Thank you for thank having you for me. having us. Has it been a lot. half an hour already? That's it. Oh, yeah. friend oh, sit so around the table. So easy to chat with you guys. sit around the table. That's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie, thank you for coming. Great having you. Um, I'm signing off here. Uh, you are watching Beyond the Highlights. Uh, I'm your host, Brian Mosalem with Vern Crump and Jason Strayhorn. So long, everybody.